Moon Bert Tech, it really pays to check door fit carefully before you deliver a car to the customer. I can see why that's necessary, all right. But on these 57 jobs, just where would we start? No, about the same place as usual, Bert. To check a door fit, you have to consider its overall appearance, how easily it opens and closes, and how well it seals. That's always basic. Yeah, Bert. If necessary, adjust the door in its opening to get it centered as much as possible. That will improve spacing so that it is acceptable. Check this point first. Right. Then check door operation next. Open and close it. If the door is centered and the striker is properly located, you can tell by the feel and the sound how well the door operates. Then see if the door fits flush with the body panels next to it. Look at the fit. Run your hand over the matching surfaces. Your final check is how well the door seals. When the door is closed, it should put enough compression on the weather strip to seal out dust and water. All right. I see what we're after. Acceptable spacing, good operation, a flush fit, and a good seal. Right. And to accomplish that, use the adjustments provided by the hinge mounting. You can move each door up, down, fore, aft, in, or out, just by making hinge adjustments. Uh, sometimes it pays to remove the striker during door adjustment, then you can reinstall it properly when the work is done. It depends on the nature of the condition. How should that striker be positioned? Well, the striker is right when the door lifts, so you can hardly notice the lift. Yet, there should be firm contact between the striker and latch to prevent rattles when the car is driven on rough roads. Be sure to keep the striker level. If you tip it so it enters the latch at an angle, you'll have a door that's hard to open and close. Yeah, Tech, that's a good point. Now, in checking appearance, use the rear quarter panel, the center post, and the windshield pillar as reference points. Generally, you make fore and aft adjustments starting at the rear and working toward the front. Why go from rear to the front? Well, you can't move the rear quarter panel but you can move the front fender and hood if necessary. The roof rail and floor sill panels are fixed top to bottom reference points. And remember that moldings at the windshield post and drip rail can be misleading. If they're out of line or improperly attached, they'll make a good door fit look bad. You might have to correct the molding alignment before you reposition a door in the opening. Now, on the rear door of this Plymouth sedan, for instance, is how you would raise or lower it. First, scribe around both hinges on the door face as a guide to how far you're going to move it. Then don't forget the jack. Oh, yeah. Put the jack under the forward edge of the door as near as possible under the hinge pins. A cloth-covered wooden block will protect the finish. Loosen the mounting bolts on both hinges one quarter to one half a turn, enough for controlled movement. Raise or lower the jack as needed and retighten the bolts. Close the door, check the fit, and then readjust the striker. Incidentally, you can get more up and down travel if necessary by loosening the hinges inside the hinge pillar. Okay, Pete, that's fairly clear. Ah, fine. You shouldn't have any trouble with fore and aft adjustment of the rear door either. You remove the trim at the center pillar and mark the hinge positions as before. Then, to move the upper part of the door fore or aft, Loosen only the upper hinge bolts at the pillar. Open the door a few inches. Lift the rear door edge or pull down on the rear edge. Retighten the bolts you loosen. Next, loosen the lower hinge bolts so the lower hinge will realign itself to the new position of the upper hinge. Then, retighten the bolts. A straight hinge pin line is necessary or you'll end up with a heavy dragging door. It might help to swing that door a few times to be sure you've eliminated any bind caused by hinge pins being cocked. Okay. I think I'll remember that. Right. Now, to move the lower part of the door fore or aft, loosen only the lower hinge bolts of the pillar. Then, open the door a few inches, pull down at the rear edge or lift up as needed, retighten the bolts. Then, loosen the upper hinge bolts to let the hinge realign itself and retighten the bolts. Moving the door in and out to get a flush fit is also fairly easy, eh, Pete? Right, Tech. Now here's how to get that flush fit. 
To move the upper half of the door in or out, you loosen only the bolts at the upper hinge. Then, with your hand, you move the door as required. Retighten the bolts to hold the adjustment. Loosen the lower hinge if you want to move the lower half of the door. I see. And after either of those adjustments, I guess I'd loosen the opposite hinge to let it realign itself. Then I'd relocate the striker plate for a good seal. That's the ticket, Bert. Now suppose we cover the up and down adjustment story on the front door. Yeah, that's a good idea, Tech. You mark the hinges at the front pillar. Then, with the wood block and jack, support the open door. Again, loosen attaching bolts of both hinges at the hinge pillar just enough to control movement. Raise or lower the jack, tighten the attaching bolts, and check the fit. If necessary, some extra vertical adjustment is possible by loosening the bolts that hold the hinge to the door. Last, check striker adjustment and change it if needed. For fore and aft movement of the front door, you loosen either the upper or lower hinge. Then you raise or lower the rear edge of the door just as you did at the rear door. Also, you'd loosen the opposite hinge to keep the hinge pins in proper alignment. Now, to move the front door in or out, loosen either the upper or lower hinge at the pillar. Open the door fully and lift or pull down on the door to get the desired movement. Retighten the hinge you loosened, loosen the opposite one to align the pins and retighten it. After that, adjust the striker for a uniform flush fit at the rear edge of the door. Okay, Tech. Will do. Now, if you have any difficulty in getting a good door fit with any of these adjustments we've talked about, you may have to check shimming at the body bolts. I got gotcha. you. Those shims affect the door openings, right? Yep. Shims at the body bolts are used for proper body-to-frame alignment. Proper tightening at the body bolts also affects body and door alignment. Now, if you think body bolts are loose, raise the car and check compression of the rubber insulators at the body bolts. Uneven compression of the insulators is a sign of uneven torque. What should that torque be, Pete? No, 18 foot-pounds, Bert. But before you check that, make sure the nut turns freely on the bolt so you'll get a true reading on the torque wrench. Now, if the opening is not square with the door, you may have to add or remove shims at the body bolts. But do this only as a last resort, as it's rarely necessary. If you do find it necessary to add or remove shims, Bert, loosen all the body bolts on the side you're working on. Right, Tech. After adding shims at any bolt, shim the adjacent bolts if it's necessary to keep the body supported evenly. And when you add shims, run the nuts up lightly and check overall alignment before you tighten them all to 18 foot-pounds. Okay, Pete, that I can do. Fine. Now, if you have to move the front fender to improve a flush fit or the spacing, you can loosen the top fender bolt. This lets you move the fender in or out. You can insert shims to raise the upper rear corner to get it flush with the door surface at the cowl. Other fender to cowl bolts can be loosened to move the entire fender fore or aft, if that's ever necessary. Well, that's about it on the standard Plymouth four-door sedans, Bert. Any questions? Not on that model, Pete. How about body service on the other models? Wait a second, Bert. Let somebody please turn the record so we can cover adjustments on other cars. Well, since you asked, Bert, the hinge and striker adjustments are made the same way on all models when you're lining up the doors with the adjacent body panels. However, there are additional adjustments to make on those Imperial, Chrysler, and DeSoto models that have aluminum door frames. Now, these are helpful in getting a good fit at the upper half of the doors. Fire Sweep and Windsor models don't have aluminum frames. I see, Pete. On the aluminum frame jobs, then, just where would you start? Well, with the rear door, Bert. Make the hinge adjustments and then check the fit and seal above the belt line. To adjust the frame, you loosen these four frame mounting bolts first, then raise the glass all the way. Move the frame in or out and tighten the bolts. Last, you check the fit. Now, as an example, if the fit along the front edge is okay, but the rear edge is still out of line, you don't have to loosen all four bolts. Loosen only the two rear mounting bolts. Then, readjust the frame for a good fit at the rear edge. Never bend the frame to get a good fit, Bert. 
Use only those frame mounting bolts to get that adjustment. Yeah, that's good advice, Tech. Now, besides that tip, remember to take it easy when you tighten these frame mounting bolts. They thread into steel inserts, which are spun into the aluminum frames. Don't draw them up so tight that the inserts will loosen up. Okay, Pete, I'll watch that. Mm, good. Now, to adjust the front door, remove the trim. Then, loosen five aluminum frame mounting bolts and the lower division bar attaching bolt inside the door. Here's that division bar bolt, Bert. You get at it through this opening. Okay. Now, once I loosen those attaching bolts, do I adjust the frame with the glass up or down? You raise the glass all the way, Bert. Then, push the frame in or out as needed for a good fit around the window opening. Tighten all bolts except the one at the division bar and check the fit. If one edge is okay, but the other one isn't, loosen just the bolts on that edge and readjust the same as you did the rear door frame. Once you have a good fit, tighten the bolt at the division bar and check operation of the glass. Run the glass up and down. If it binds at the lower end of the division bar, remove the mounting bolt at the lower end shim between the bar and its bracket to get smooth window operation. On Imperial models, an adjustable mounting bolt at the lower end of the division bar provides an in and out adjustment. I see. No shims are needed on Imperials. Right. Now, if you remove any of the aluminum frame attaching bolts, be sure to get the right length bolt in the right place. A bolt that's too long could enter the channel and interfere with glass operation. Another good point to watch is that miter-type joint in the aluminum frame. Yeah, Tech's right. If the flange of the frame is sprung outward, that miter joint will open up on the outside. This affects sealing as well as appearance. You can correct that by using a block of wood and a mallet to tap the flange down at the corner until the joint is closed. I get it. Anything else that's special? Well, on that aluminum trim strip at the center pillar, you may have to use a drift and shift the flange to improve appearance. Be sure there's clearance between the lower end of the trim strip and the front door panel. That's pretty good coverage on aluminum frame jobs, Pete. How about giving Bert a few door adjustment tips on the four-door hardtop models? Well, that's not a bad idea, Tech. On four-door hardtops, you start door and glass adjustments at the front and work your way to the rear. Well, the reason for that is simple. There's less adjustment possible between the front vent window and windshield post, and there's much more adjustment available at the rear due to the new rear door design. You adjust the front door, the same as on the other models, and you get a good door fit first. Hinges and the striker are the same. But at the top edge of the front vent frame, where it seals at the roof rail weather strip, you'll have to be careful. Why so careful there, Pete? Well, the weather strip has three sealing lips, an outside deflector lip, a primary sealing lip, and a secondary sealing lip. The glass frame should just clear the outside lip without binding. The frame should put enough pressure on the primary lip for a good seal. So, adjust the top edge of the frame to make it lean into the body for a good secondary seal at the third lip. Any tricks to adjusting that frame? No, oh, not especially, Bert. You can adjust the vent frame and division bar assembly in or out at three attaching points. You'd first loosen the upper frame attaching bolt. It's reached from the front face of the door. Then, loosen the lower frame attaching bolt at the bracket inside the inner panel. Next, loosen the bolt that holds the lower end of the division bar to its bracket inside the door. Finally, Move the frame in or out for a good fit and seal. Tighten the three attaching bolts and check the fit by opening and closing the door. Clear enough, Pete. I ought to adjust that frame without any trouble. <laughs> Fine. Well, now you'll need to raise the front door glass and see if it forms a straight line with the top edge of the vent frame. If you need to level it, here's how to go about it. First, you loosen the cross arm pivot shaft nut and the upper glass stops. Next, loosen the small bolt holding the division bar bracket. Raise the glass all the way and shift it by hand so the top edge is level. Hold it in that position and retighten the division bar bolt, 
a pivot shaft nut, and the glass stops. To check glass operation again, Bert, if it runs too tightly or too loosely in the channels, you'll have to adjust the rear channel. And what's that going to involve? Well, you just loosen the bolts of the two brackets that hold the rear run channel, lower the glass, shift the rear channel forward until it makes even contact with the rear edge of the glass. Then, tighten the brackets to hold the adjustment. Now, for an in or out glass adjustment at the rear edge of the door, loosen the two rear run channel to bracket attaching bolts. You reach these from the rear face of the door. Move the glass in or out as needed, tighten the rear channel bolts, check glass fit at the weather strip by opening and closing the door. I've got it. The front door adjustment won't bother me. Well, neither will the rear door and glass. We've covered this before, but as a reminder, these front channel adjusting bolts are loosened to give you up and down movement. It's a good way to level the glass in the opening. Loosen the rear run channel bolts for fore and aft movement. For in and out adjustment of the glass, loosen the center channel support bracket bolts. Tighten the bolts when you've got the glass in or out as needed. Finally, adjust the upper stops to control rear door glass travel. Okay, Pete. I've got the pitch on the rear door. There's more on that rear door adjustment and on other body service items in this reference book, Bert. Be sure to look the whole story over. You bet I will, Tech. I know how important good appearance is to our new car owners. You just said a mouthful, Bert. It really pays to do a good job on body service every time. This year, in addition to the best engineered cars, we've got the best styled cars in the field. Good body work on your part will help us keep our style leadership advantage. <laughs> <laughs>